Welcome back scholars. This is the last video for the intro to chemical reactions. And what we're really talking about is types of chemical reactions and how to recognize them. And the first reaction that most people put into their list is that of synthesis or combination reactions. And in synthesis or combination reactions, more than one reactant are coming together to make at least one product that is larger, heavier, more atoms than any single reactant. And if we were in the classroom, if we had materials, if we were in the lab, the synthesis reaction I would show you would be the reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And those react to make water. Right now, this would be a, an example of a chemical reaction. I would not call this a chemical equation because it is not yet balanced, but it does describe what happens in the reaction. For us to balance this, we would have to make two waters and have two hydrogens reacting. And so as an aside, when we balance chemical reactions, except for a very specific type of group of chemical reactions that hopefully we'll have time in the fourth quarter to get into, we want to avoid using fractions. And so instead of having any fractions here, we always want integers. That's an example of a synthesis or a combination reaction. Another example is from my intro video. I showed you guys the reaction between iron and oxygen to make some sort of iron oxide. This would also be an example of a synthesis reaction. And another one that is an example of a synthesis reaction was the acetic acid and ammonia making the ammonium acetate. This is also a synthesis reaction. That one also happens to be acid base, but we're not talking about acid base reactions right now. So for a synthesis or a combination reaction, notice that this is larger there is more than one reactant. Larger than any single reactant. How many atoms are in the water molecule? There are three atoms. There are two hydrogens and one oxygen. And if you look at the reactants, none of the reactants have more than two atoms. In fact, they each only have two atoms. Even though there are two hydrogen molecules, each individual hydrogen molecule is only made of two atoms. Now, the opposite of synthesis or combination is decomposition. And in decomposition, we typically have one reactant. which breaks down into more than one product. And one of the classic examples for decomposition reactions is the decomposition of carbonates. There's also decomposition of chlorides. Your textbook actually gives you many examples with these types 
of chemical reactions. Um, you also have decomposition of oxides. So here's one in the textbook, which is the mercury two oxide as a solid gets heated, which if you remember, heat is gonna be symbolized by a triangle, by that delta, gets heated into mercury and oxygen gas. That oxygen has to be a gas at room temperature. The mercury is the one metal which is a liquid at room temperature. So for us to balance this, we need two oxygens in the reactants which means we now need two mercuries in the products. Now that's balanced. We also have, again, um, decomposition, as I said, of carbonates. So calcium carbonate is a classic example, which gets heated and breaks down into calcium oxide and water. Oops, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Carbon dioxide, and of course, carbon dioxide is a gas, and that calcium oxide is an ionic compound, so we would also think about that as being a solid. Notice this is already balanced as written. There are all kinds of compounds here that will decompose, and we're not super worried about all of the individual rules for them but being able to recognize a decomposition reaction when you see one would be important. Another major reaction is that of combustion. And in a combustion reaction, a fuel, typically a hydrocarbon, but not always, reacts with oxygen, to produce CO2 and water. Additionally, if that fuel contains sulfur, then we're going to consider sulfur dioxide as being a product. If that fuel contains nitrogen, then we will consider nitrogen dioxide as being a product. You might see sulfur or nitrogen, coming from the combustion of proteins. Since all amino acids contain nitrogen and two amino acids contain sulfur, cysteine, and methionine. In combustion, whatever your fuel source is, if that's a hydrocarbon, let's just go ahead and say that it is propane. That propane would be a gas at room temperature. It will react with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide gas and water. Now, typically we would think about what state these would be at room temperature. Because this is combustion and there's going to be a lot of energy around, we could go ahead and say the water was a gas. But remember, the state will matter in many cases, especially when we're thinking about energy. When we see that there are three carbons here, that means we need three carbon dioxides. We see eight hydrogens, which means we need four waters. That gives us four oxygens plus six oxygens, which is 10. So we need a five here in front of the O2 to give us 10 oxygens. So this would be balanced. For combustion reactions, you should always be able to take the reactants. You should be able to recognize for these reactants that it is a combustion reaction, and you should be able to write the products and balance that reaction once you recognize that it is combustion. The last two types of reactions we think about in this class are called replacement reactions. And the first type here would be a single replacement reaction.
and in single replacement, a single element replaces a similar element in a compound kicking it out into its elemental form. So what do I mean by that? 